It has obviously been a very tough couple of weeks in Minneapolis. The city is once again the focus of concerns about the police department and yet another wave of violence. Joining us right now is Minneapolis Mayor Jacob Fry. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me, Esme. All right, obviously a very difficult few weeks. Uh, there are signs popping up around the city. Fry lied, Amir died. Did you lie in your campaign literature and are you going to resign as some people are asking for? No, uh, we did not lie, and no, I'm not going to resign. We just had an election a couple of months ago. The results were clear, and we have a lot of work to do. Uh, but it is important that we address the underlying issue that you referenced. In November of 2020, we put out a policy that ended the practice of unannounced entry. In other words, officers, as of right. that time, were required to announce themselves before entering the apartment, even in instances with a no-knock warrant. Uh, now, that was an important step that we made, and we believe that we can go further right now. Now, where we got into trouble is uh, when referencing a longer list in shorter form, it doesn't always reflect the necessary oh, nuance, and I, and, I, and I own that. But and you the, call, you've called it sloppy, but you know, you're a very savvy politician. If one of your opponents did this, you'd be all over them. I mean, what do you say to people who aren't satisfied with that answer? Well, our, our campaign website, my long form interviews, the press releases, all of it had the information accurate. And in fact, uh, even stations like WCCO accurately covered the full perspective. The difficulty comes when you're tackling these complex issues in shorter form. I own that. Uh, we will do better in the future and we'll pr provide the necessary nuance 100% of the time. All right. In the releases and some of the early wording of this incident, Amir Locke's incident, he was called a suspect. He was never a suspect and he was not named in the warrant. Uh, what are your thoughts about that? Is there an apology in the offing here for the family? Well, first of all, it was wrong. Uh, oftentimes you don't have a lot of information early on, but never uh, should our Minneapolis Police Department make assumptions about the individuals involved. Uh, it was wrong flat out and going forward, we have a process set up with our civil rights director to make sure that there's a necessary vetting of any statements that go out. Oftentimes during these incidents, you know, there's this balance between getting information out quickly and getting it right. You got to err on getting it right. Uh, you have called for a, you have a moratorium in place on no-knock warrants. You say you're going to hire some experts to look at it. Why not just call the St. Paul Police Department? They haven't served a no-knock warrant since 2016. They're right across the river. Well, we will be working with the St. Paul Police Department in their strategy and how they implement and or execute knock or no knock warrants. Uh, one other big piece uh, is, is numbers and necessary resources and how you ultimately execute these warrants. On a per capita basis, St. Paul has far more officers and resources than our Minneapolis Police Department does right now, but we need to work okay. with them to figure out how they're best utilized. The Star Tribune reported this week uh, that a number of, of individuals appointed to leadership positions by Interim Chief Amelia Huffman have either been fired previously by the department or been the subject of lawsuits that have resulted in a city payout. In what world do people who are fired get rehired in a supervisory position? I mean, that doesn't happen in, in the real world. Why is it happening and continuing to happen in the, in the Minneapolis Police Department where also you had Derek Chauvin in a leadership position? Well, first, these positions will all be reviewed and I'll say we have a national search right now uh, for a police chief and we want to make sure we're getting the best and the brightest in that particular position who can then fill out and you've got all of you've the got necessary. applicants who want to be chief. We have people that do in fact want to be chief. Now the national search is, is just beginning uh, and so we still have quite a bit of work to do in that realm and I'll note that in order to reform a police department, you also have to allow for individuals themselves to be reformed. It takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of effort. There are no easy okay. solutions in this, but we're digging it. Okay. This wave of violence this past week, um, another child is shot and killed in, in Minneapolis. Uh, two miles away, a short time, two hours later, two miles away, a bus driver is, is shot in the head, somehow he's gonna survive. The next day, two people are found dead in a car just a few blocks away from where this boy was killed, you know, this young man. 
Can you do anything to saturate that area? I know your police officers are stretched, but it seems like it is happening in focused areas. It is fo happening in focused areas, and in fact, about 95% of the gun violence that we see happens in about five neighborhoods alone in our city. Those five neighborhoods are dramatically impacted by this violence, and it's on us to make sure that we've got steps in place to remedy it. So first, we've got a national search happening right now for a new police chief, as I've mentioned. Second, we're going to be hiring more community-oriented officers that want to be the change in this department. Third, we're going to be providing a comprehensive strategy and approach so that we're bringing all of these different facets together. And then finally, we need to be working and partnering with the feds. Uh, the feds and the Department of Justice are going to be coming in. Well, we need they're, the necessary they're reviewing tools to the be helped. the police helped. department right That's now. That's exactly I mean, right. And they're going to come swooping in probably fairly soon. Do you have any timeline on that at all? We don't have an exact timeline, but we know that they can provide us with tools and resources to leverage better outcomes. And we don't need a, an investigation. So you're welcoming the DOJ oh, investigation and the conclusions. we're thrilled to have the assistance. Okay. We're thrilled to have the assistance. And I'll tell you, we don't need an investigation to know that we need a massive culture shift and reform within our okay. police department. But they can help with the resources and the necessary levers that we need. All right. Well, Mayor Fry, I know it's been difficult. I appreciate your coming in and answering these questions. I appreciate you having me, Esme. Thank you.